So, who am I? Everybody, first of all. I am uh, Stefano Di Paola. I work um, for Mended Security, which is an uh, application security company consultancy uh, based in Italy. And uh, I also like to do research, uh, security research uh, in the spare time. So I contribute uh, with OWASP uh, and um, I wrote some uh, chapter uh, of the testing guide uh, for OWASP, uh, which I hope everybody knows what, uh, what it is. If, it, uh, if someone doesn't know, uh, just uh, go to the site uh, owasp.org and uh, have a look at it, which it because it's a very good uh, uh, community. And, uh, well, I, I'm uh, on Twitter, uh, Wysek Wysek, and uh, two web blogs, uh, the, the, the where the, the main one is uh, the one uh, from the from my company. So, uh, we will talk today about uh, uh, DOM-based XSS. We will see um, uh, a methodology on which is kind of very easy methodology uh, an easy way to to try to look into JavaScript and uh, try to find issues inside uh, JavaScript. And uh, I'll show you uh, a tool which uh, I, I did, and uh, it's called Dominator. And we will see some uh, interesting examples. First of all, uh, we need to define what is cross-site scripting and uh, um, what kind of uh, attack is. It's uh, an attack that uh, takes uh, uh, advantage of uh, injection inside HTML or inside uh, JavaScript code and uh, uh, gets executed in the uh, browsers of a victim. Uh, so it's a client-side issue which can be of three uh, types, three kinds. The one which is reflected, it means that uh, the code, um, the, 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 the payload, the malicious code, will go uh, from the victim's browser to uh, the server, and then from the server in will be injected inside the HTML page, and then will go uh, to the victim's browser and it will be interpreted as a uh, uh, legit HTML code. So this is the, uh, the famous one, no? the, the one that everybody can find. Uh, there is uh, another one which is uh, uh, not directly reflected by the browser, but, but it is uh, first uh, uh, first is stored somewhere uh, on the server side and then after that is taken and uh, uh, when the victim's browser, when the, when the victim uh, asks for some page uh, which is uh, where th the malicious code is requested to be there uh, but it, it simply uh, gets injected from the database to uh, the HTML directly by the server. So this is the stored one. So uh, now we have seen two kind of uh, uh, issues that are related to an injection which occurs uh, occur in um, the HTML, but the injection itself is, uh, um, is uh, accomplished uh, uh, in the code uh, at server side, okay? So there is a third one, a third kind, which is the DOM-based cross-site scripting, where actually uh, the payload is 
taken directly by the code inside the browser. And uh, uh, the code inside the browser is uh, uh, known and uh, commonly uh, JavaScript, in JavaScript, written in JavaScript. Yeah, there is also that uh, basic uh, stuff uh, in uh, under Windows, but uh, I, th I think no one uses it anymore. So, uh, But the point here is that uh, the code uh, which takes the payload and injects it uh, in uh, inside uh, uh, the HTML, inside the page, is uh, taken by the browser itself, by a program which is uh, uh, run by the browser. So no more direct uh, um, in interaction with the server. The DOM-based XSS literature. The first uh, time we hear about uh, uh, DOM XSS is uh, by, a pa by an email, actually, by this uh, awesome guy, which is Amit Klein, uh, in uh, 2005, which f tries to formalize uh, an attack uh, which is actually a cross scripting, but is, uh, uh, it happens at uh, client side, not at server side. Uh, yeah, it just uh, since it's just an email in a mailing list, it's uh, mostly a wrap up of uh, uh, some ideas. Okay, he, he, he wrote down, he just penciled down some ideas and said, "I think this is a new kind of attack." Uh, so that is the basics. But after that. Uh, uh, everybody was uh, finding most uh, uh, interesting, uh, um, more interesting, sorry, uh, SQL injection, of course, it's more interesting, uh, cross reflected cross scripting, stored cross scripting, because it, the, they were probably more easy to, uh, to find. So uh, no one uh, until uh, three or three years, three years ago, uh, actually looked into it. Uh, yes, probably there are there's some, uh, some uh, literature, some articles, some blog, blog posts, like this one by Ori Siegel, uh, which is interesting, uh, and uh, you can go check it out. Um, but there is nothing. There, there is nothing that uh, actually um, takes every uh, knowledge about DOM-based XSS and wrap it up inside the document. Uh, then, so I tried to uh, start uh, a project uh, that tries to mm, put things together and uh, try, of course, to find new things. And uh, it's a wiki. It's uh, the DOM XSS wiki. And uh, you can uh, actually is, uh, you can just uh, ask, uh, drop me a line, and uh, if you want to contribute, uh, you can. Uh, I will uh, set up uh, a contributor um, account. And uh, we will see how it can be um, useful for us during the research of uh, DOM-based uh, cross-scripting issues. Let's go in the code. Uh, I found this uh, uh, last year. And uh, I was just, uh, I was actually uh, writing this uh, dominator tool and uh, I was, uh, so I, I was looking inside HTML, JavaScript pages. I went to Twitter and I saw this piece of code. Um, it was uh, at the very top of the page. So I didn't 
need any kind of tool. I just saw it and uh, it's kind of easy to interpret. It takes from the location the part after the pound, the hash, and the question mar uh, exclamation mark, and uh, if exists, uh, simply assign the location object to that part. So this is a classic uh, use of uh, uh, taking something that is not uh, trustable and put it inside something that is dangerous without any uh, further filtering. What can be done? Uh, what they were expecting, uh, the, the, the developers, was something like this. So if the input was slash Wysak Wysak, it became Twitter slash Wysak Wysak because I, there was this slash Wysak Wysak. Okay. So what happens if the input is this one? The browser sees uh, a protocol, which is actually uh, a pseudo protocol, JavaScript, with uh, columns, and uh, uh, assign it to the location. Uh, that one is a, a simple JavaScript command, which gets executed immediately. Immediately, sorry. So, I wrote to the guys. Uh, Twitter, and uh, they just uh, released a fix without telling me anything, no thank you, no nothing, and uh, they released this fix. <coughs> so, uh, they tried to apply a filter, they were filtering out the columns. Uh, how? The first thing is how they did. They uh, replace globally, this is the third argument, the column with nothing. Uh, where they did uh, test this filter? I can tell you, because uh, the only uh, way that filter works good is uh, the only browser the filter works good is actually Firefox. Because that one, the third argument, is, uh, pro is uh, uh, an implementation uh, of Firefox, but not for uh, Explorer, for example. So it was, uh, it became for Explorer, simply, simply just replace the first occurrence of the columns. So we could, uh, Add two columns. It replaced the emptied, just the first occurrence, and we had again the JavaScript columns and the code. Also, this uh, was uh, uh, a very interesting, uh, um, ve very was uh, very useful for uh, bypassing uh, um, cross scripting filters. Uh, implemented inside the browser, like no script. Uh, someone of you uses uh, no script for Firefox, which blocks uh, scripts, uh, malicious uh, attacks, and so on. Okay. If you use Firefox, you should. Uh, if you use Chrome, they, ha they have uh, a filtering, uh, a cross-scripting uh, uh, filter, uh, which tries to detect attacks inside the location bar and uh, tries to detect how by looking at uh, uh, patterns. No? So if we add uh, J column, J A column, and so on, for, or for example, J column, then the pattern JavaScript columns doesn't, is not there anymore. And, uh, uh, the replace simply emptied, empties uh, the first occurrence of the columns, and we have again, we bypass the, f the Chrome filter or the NoScript filter, 
and uh, uh, the, the, the filter itself uh, inside. So I told them, uh, guys, uh, no, it's not good. Uh, please uh, um, use uh, some some more brain, please, because uh, the replace is not uh, a good filtering, a good way to filter uh, things in this case. It's not good because uh, you never know what uh, what can work in a browser, because browsers are a very complex machine. And uh, in fact, <laughs> this this kind of uh, filtering, this way, it was actually possibly good because now it works on every browser because that one is uh, the correct way to replace uh, uh, on every browser globally uh, a pattern. But there were two other issues. The first, open redirect. <coughs> um, the second one the open redirect is because if a browser sees slash slash, it's uh, interpreted as HTTP column slash slash. So open redirect. The second one on uh, Internet Explorer, uh, if uh, it sees uh, uh, um, HTML entity, it firstly uh, uh, translate it to the to the character, and then uh, execute uh, in the location bar. So it became uh, again. This is the this is the entity for quotes. Uh, sorry for quotes for uh, columns, and so it became again. There was no columns as a character. Explorer so uh, sees it, uh, replaces it to columns, but bypasses the filter because there are no columns and gets executed again finally they found uh, a good way uh, they actually assigned it to a context aware uh, par uh, context aware uh, function or uh, in, in this case uh, uh, variable which is path name, where path name is actually uh, not the absolute URL, but the relative one, without the host. So no way to, it's like uh, binding parameters uh, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, C SQL. No? Uh, this way, there's, uh, the browser does not interpret uh, the payload as a, a whole uh, URL, but just as a path name. So what does this uh, example uh, teach us? That uh, um, even in uh, two lines of code, even in JavaScript, uh, to fix, to do the right thing, uh, and try to avoid uh, issues like uh, cross scripting is very, very complex because browsers are very, very complex. So, uh, let's talk uh, about uh, uh, terminology and code flow. We have to, when when we uh, we try to test an application uh, just uh, the way it is, so we see it as a black box, right? Uh, so we just try to put some input. We do what's called the fault injection. We try to change some value and see how, observe how the uh, application behaves. What's the output? In the case of JavaScript, <coughs> it's, uh, we have actually we actually have the code, so we can see the code. We can look at the code and try to understand what's going on. 
and uh, since we can do that we have to understand uh, what can be uh, controlled by an attacker so uh, attacker uh, in uh, in the meaning of uh, uh, a source uh, a data source which is uh, not trustable um, and uh, by starting from there understanding where that uh, val the, those values those inputs go and uh, uh, how they're treated so if we we call uh, we name uh, um, the input uh, source we can name the uh, the end of the uh, flow when the input uh, is treated and goes somewhere the end of the flow as a sink and in this uh, um, analogy we can think about water source sinks and flow of data um, and uh, also if we want uh, the pure water we have to use filters right so filters can be seen as uh, operation on data uh, which uh, uh, purify it in uh, the analogy of the code we can uh, so we can see that sources are uh, the sources of input which are to be considered not trusted uh, sinks are function uh, or operation that are potentially dangerous like uh, uh, allows for example injection or uh, uh, we'll see and filters are operation on sources which change in some way the content of the source uh, okay <coughs> once we have uh, this uh, terminology we can uh, also introduce the concept of taint propagation and taint values and uh, mm, which could be something like uh, in, in code like a flag and uh, uh, sources are to be considered by default tainted values operation on a source can result in a tainted value for example the concatenation of one tainted value with something else the result is a uh, tainted as well uh, or uh, operation uh, could be uh, operation of a tainted value could actually purify as a filter uh, purify the the result and uh, um, in of course in uh, um, I w what what I call a uh, well-designed filter well, I mean that if a filter is actually purifying it is a a well-designed filter if uh, it's purifying if it tries to purify like the replace we saw but does not actually purify it purifies it then it's not a, a well-designed filter it's just a simple operation so uh, uh, when we ha we have the code we can uh, and once we have identified sources sinks and filters we have to understand how the tent propagation uh, goes flows how to do that I identify the sources identify the taint operation so try to understand if a result is tainted or not uh, when identify sinks in, in the uh, meaning I um, in the 
I mean, uh, understand if a value is uh, uh, is going to be uh, used by a sync, and uh, identify according to the sync if there are some operation that attains the value. And uh, that is why there is a question mark here. Because we actually don't know if uh, the, the set of filters that are used are actually well-designed filters. So since the first things to do is to identify what are the sources, uh, let's see. Browser, what, is, uh, what can be collected from JavaScript uh, from the browser that can actually be controlled by um, by an attacker. Well, actually, almost everything. Uh, the location bar, the content of the location bar, the name of the window, uh, the, the content of the location bar or the URL uh, actually has uh, one, two, three, four, four uh, variables, predefined variables, and uh, their uh, sub, uh, sub kind, path name, href, search, which is the question mark to the hash part, and hash, which is from the, qu from the hash part uh, to the end. The referrer, we can get the referrer from JavaScript by using document.referrer, the name. The attacker can, con can actually control every one of those. There are also other things. Uh, for example, an attacker could control also some value of uh, the cookies for the victim, of course. Uh, so we have to uh, think about sources, uh, also cookies. Uh, the HTML5 post message uh, method uh, is uh, interesting as well because uh, um, it uh, actually can uh, um, actually allows communication between. Uh, Windows cross uh, cross cross site. So even if uh, two windows does not do not belong to the same host, so they not uh, they are um, they are uh, not um, on the same site, same origin policy. The uh, post message method can actually uh, allow communication. So that one. Is, has to be considered a source, in particular the data attribute of the message. And the uh, window dialog arguments, which is another one. Okay, so the direct sources are probably those ones, direct, in the reflected. Uh, kind of uh, in a, in the dom based xss uh, uh, reflected attack so the attacker simply forced the victim to visit some site where he controls those sources <coughs> also there are intermediate sources i mean that in some way uh, sometimes uh, sometime um the code took something from the location, for example, and put it in a database, in a client-side database. HTML5 is full of uh, all these uh, uh, new features, no? Uh, databases on the client side. So uh, companies will try to uh, uh, also track you da track you um while you are um, while you're um it's a you have to 
think about the, the use of database uh, client side like uh, having uh, the possibility of not just uh, use some uh, little uh, uh, limit limited cookie but uh, you have probably uh, for each uh, um, database uh, five mega of data limited to five mega but is a lot so actually a page can store uh, until five mega of data in your uh, in your machine. So, if something was taken from a source like uh, the URL uh, location and then put inside the storage, like uh, local storage or database, uh, then it will, in a second time, it will become like the stored. Uh, DOM-based XSS. So it becomes a source itself, the storage one. Also, the value of some input. Uh, there is uh, uh, an ongoing research about using uh, drag-and-drop games uh, in order to steal data from uh, uh, one uh, um, from one host to another host, from a, a victim uh, uh, host to an attacker host. And also, yes, cookies as well. And also XML HTTP request response, like, uh, as uh, I said before, like using uh, the, st the storage attack, the stored attack in the stored, uh, stored cross-site scripting. But this time, it's used uh, from the JavaScript. So it's DOM-based, but it's stored, stored. So those were the sources. Now we have to identify as much as sync as possible. <coughs> uh, I'd say there are at least two, two kind of uh, of syncs in JavaScript. The one that uh, allow to inject HTML and the one that are used to uh, direct uh, evaluate JavaScript. So, uh, well, well, document write, inner HTML, outer HTML, and so on. And uh, eval uh, function, set them out, and so on. Also, for example, the, uh, look the, the Twitter issue is, uh, was use, used uh, location as a sync. It's the assignment to location itself. And that one is uh, um, evaluation of JavaScript, direct JavaScript. Of course, there is a third one that depends that probably depends on the, the 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 logic of the application itself client side uh, not all sync must uh, result in uh, javascript uh, execution probably uh, we could uh, think about uh, uh, modifying uh, um, the the, um, the document object model in order to change the the, the graphic uh, aspect of uh, uh, of the page, so the uh, the victim will uh, probably click uh, to something, thinking to do something else, and instead maybe it will delete uh, everything instead of viewing. Change of uh, what's called the uh, user interface redressing. Uh, leak cookie, write cookies, which could affect the way um, the, the way the victim interacts to the application uh, server side, and uh, directory traversal you by using the victim itself, and so on. Uh, the more we go we try to identify new sync, the more we have to um, 
to, to stick with the with the application itself because uh, yeah it's like uh, having uh, uh, two kind of vulnerabilities SQL injection and cross -site scripting there's not only those two there are uh, infinite ways to inject uh, into another layer but there are also uh, infinite way to ha hack uh, an application by using logic issues so the more uh, we go deep inside issues and in this um, in this uh, case we go deep uh, to try to find new things the more we go into uh, ways to uh, change the logic of the application itself so there could be uh, things like this like uh, uh, the user, the, uh, the, 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 um, the sync could be controlling a K of uh, um, a DOM um, of a DOM object and uh, controlling maybe also the uh, value of that K. In, in this case, we actually control almost everything because from the from from a uh, special object we control the element and the value so we can overwrite almost everything also mixed objects and so on now considering that um, Another kind of uh, issues that now is uh, fixed, uh, but not because they thought it it was a real issue, bec but but because uh, actually no one was using it, is that uh, on Firefox there was the possibility to create uh, two cookie with one assignment by using a new line. Uh, so it became uh, the possibility for an attacker to inject new cookies it was there was the possibility to uh, add a new line to an assignment okay yeah then uh, there is uh, nothing that is related to javascript but could be related to style uh, cascading style sheets or uh, image tags like controlling the url in particular this this uh, is interesting. We can we can try to uh, just uh, not use JavaScript, use only styles, so CSS, and try to steal uh, attributes values from a victim's page. Uh, also, I have to say that Mario uh, is uh, doing some work on, on that, uh, Mario Hederick, and uh, is uh, is going uh, is giving uh, a boost to to this uh, kind of research. But this was this is what I found a couple of years ago. So this one is the uh, victim's page and uh, there is a style which is injected in this page and uh, one by one there is uh, inside inside this page there is uh, um Okay, inside this page, there is uh, an hidden value, and uh, here there is uh, an injection. So we just inject a style sheet without any kind of JavaScript. We 
can actually extract those values by using uh, uh, inference. So this is the, 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 the part. Uh, how <coughs> by using attribute selectors, which uh, um, actually can do some kind of uh, r regular expression testing uh, uh, inside the, uh, the attributes values. So if uh, a value starts with A, then load some image. And uh, on the server side, that uh, behavior will uh, uh, tell the attacker that uh, an attribute starts with A if that image is loaded. For then for each uh, letter, and it corresponds an image. And uh, f to the attacker, it will be for each uh, um, for each value. There will be a sequence uh, of uh, images which are loaded. Uh, there is another I very interesting uh, uh, new feature that is uh, why uh, that is the abuse of XML HTTP requests in new browsers. Uh, once upon a time, when uh, we had uh, uh, this uh, important uh, acronym, which was AJAX, uh, there was this method. XML HTTP request that allowed to um, perform uh, requests uh, mm, according to the same origin policy. So only to the host, to the host the page orig originated. With HTML5, we can uh, use it cross domain. So the browser can ask for pages outside. Uh, the, 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 the same origin policy and uh, if uh, on server side there is uh, uh, an header, a particular header which is called uh, uh, access control al uh, allower origin or something like that then the browser will uh, get the response and access it so all those uh, application like Facebook which used uh, which used to use XML HTTP request as a same origin policy uh, feature in order to get the HTML of the pages of the users and uh, simply use it uh, uh, in uh, as inner HTML in order to show it in the page now it became uh, in HTML of everything from outside, uh, from uh, a server, uh, an attacker can, can control uh, remotely from a server. So the attacker controls a, an, a host that uh, uh, responds with a, an header like that. The browser sees the header, and uh, inside the response, there is the HTML, the payload the attacker wants, which gets actually injected in the Facebook. Uh, domain and then it's ownage. Oh, wh one can could could say, oh, how can I fix this? How can I filter that? Uh, one could say, uh, I try to see. I want since I want it to be uh, relative to my site, I could uh, do something like the Twitter. Twitter did, like uh, looking for a if uh, mm, starts with HTTP, then uh, stop uh, and stuff like that. Yeah, but uh, there are two um, very interesting, uh, um, two very interesting uh, projects that uh, show how as uh, uh, all the strange ways uh, a browser. Uh, could see an, an absolute URL uh, 
instead uh, of uh, just uh, crappy uh, cr crappy relative URLs like uh, four backslashes so if uh, the filter is uh, let's look for HTTP colon slash slash then HTTP colon backslash 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 won't match and that one is seen as uh, external in Chrome, Safari, Explorer, Android and so on so filters what uh, this is the the core filters classics in uh, javascript there are four in, uh, three encoding filters direct encoding filters which is escape encode uri component encode uri with their rel, uh, their uh, their, uh, um, their opposite and escape the code and so on and uh, more uh, complex filters which are replace uh, the Twitter one, uh, match test f using uh, regular expressions or index solve and so on. Uh, filters. Let's take the, the, the classic ones. Escape. What escape escapes and what not? Uh, filters is a matter of uh, special characters that are uh, translated to something which is going to be uh, treated as cons constant by the interpreter. No? Special characters and constant characters, the constant version of the character, like quotes, apostrophe, uh, angular parentheses, and so on. So, according to uh, this table escapes is the most uh, uh, comprehensive encode uh, URI is uh, the least comprehensive and encode the URI component uh, is uh, in the middle so if someone is trying to filter out something using the wrong classic filter then probably is not using it correctly and is not to be considered uh, a well-designed filter. Okay. So let's see this, and uh, guess where I get that filter. This is uh, a wrong filter because it's saying that. Uh, if uh, matches bbc.co.uk anything slash uh, anything bbc.com dot uh, js then it's supposed to be from bbc.co.uk no of course not I could add something like that and actually uh, let it make it match that filter so that that one is a wrong filter <coughs> and in this case the the result is a tainted value as well Uh, this is another um, interesting uh, if uh, uh, it's like uh, whitelisting uh, tags okay so B uh, in this case uh, bold and italic are the whitelisted tags and uh, if uh, the tags inside are uh, uh, not be bold or italics then they are uh, stripped out well there is another problem in the uh, regular expression uh, there is no multi-line here so if this is the payload which is uh, unescaped 
this 0a becomes a new line and then uh, uh, it's actually not uh, does not match with this and uh, is not stripped out how did I find this by trying <laughs> simply <laughs> I see and I, I, I show you how I saw the uh, the filter how I found the filter and then I tried I applied it to a JavaScript console trying to find uh, ways to uh, bypass it okay since uh, Oh, how much? Okay. Okay. Let's see this. Uh, So the last, uh, the really last uh, filter to show you, and then uh, uh, I, I will, um, I'll show you the, the Dominator too. Uh, there could be another problem with uh, fi filters. Uh, actually are simply uh, are could be considered as simple parsers right regular expression uh, if uh, then and so on actually uh, cookies in uh, in uh, in the browser are a very big string which is built uh, uh, by the internals and then given to the JavaScript as a very big string uh, containing all the cookies inside. Uh, that parser is, uh, uh, is wrong because, uh, first of all, we have to say that uh, there is no native parsing of cookies uh, in, uh, in in browser and in, uh, inside browser so uh, via JavaScript, so there is no way to to say, uh, hey browser, give me the cookie named uh, my cookie name. There you go. No, you need to write your own parser. Always. So what does this one? Splits semicolons and then tries to find uh, if uh, the, the, the cookie contains uh, that name and uh, returns the substrings from that name on. Ah, so, let's take this. If uh, there is an assignment of uh, some, uh, ve some name of the cookie equals to the referrer, and then somewhere else there is a get cook an evaluation of get cook eval using that parser history user history what happens if uh, the referrer contains uh, user hist equals alert the cookie is set uh, the previous cookie is set uh, like ref equals uh, all the referrer and then inside the referrer inside the value there is this user hist equals alert one which is not what is intended to to look for in the eval part here we are looking for another cookie but actually since the the parser is is uh, not well, f well def designed, then it will find and return something else, 
which is the controlled one the, uh, by the attacker. So let's put it together and uh, one could say, okay, now I know sources, how filters work, uh, what are the things and uh, Mario, uh, the master uh, and master of uh, regular expression, did that, which is actually very interesting. But uh, the problem is that most of the time you get these codes from the JavaScript uh, inside the browser. And uh, even if you use that regular expression, it's almost impossible to track, to use uh, the taint propagation and track the flow by hand using your own eyes and brain. So also, uh, you can, uh, the code could be packed, could be analyzed, could be uh, evaluated, could be obfuscated, could be everything. So uh, there could be other automation tools that can make some part of the work for you. Static analyzer, not working very good uh, when uh, uh, we have uh, obfuscation, for example. Uh, script injection, uh, uh, like uh, let's wrap uh, and let's wrap things, and uh, if that things is called, uh, probably uh, there is uh, an injection. It's not true in the HTML of uh, a constant uh, string, uh, there is no harm in using it. Uh, using uh, classic uh, taint propagation, which is uh, okay, but is not good in order to understand, uh, you, you'll get a, a lot of false positives. And then uh, uh, my tool, Dominator. What does Dominator? Uh, adds uh, to JavaScript implementation inside Firefox. I modified, actually modified the source code of Firefox in order to add taint flag to strings and uh, um, wrap uh, location or wrap all the sources in order to create uh, strings that have, have a, a tainted value, a tainted flag. So creates, uh, if you, uh, via JavaScript, ask for uh, the s location uh, address, uh, you'll get a string which is tainted. So in the flow, every operation you'll do inside on that string, using that string, will result in something that is tainted as well. And uh, the part of uh, following the flow itself uh, is Dominator that does that for you. Uh, this is the model I'm not going to uh, explain. And uh, this is, uh, this is uh, the, the console of Dominator. It's uh, Firefox, as you can see. We, this is Firebug and so on. So let's, uh, this is a simple console, JavaScript console. If we ask for, if we ask for uh, location href, it will be all these, it will return a tainted string. And uh, according to, according to the, um, th the code, the results, uh, I can just say hello word using uh, a constant and uh, it, it uses uh, inner HTML uh, inside a, a div uh, tag. Okay, so what happens if I take uh, location href and, uh, and uh, show it uh, inside uh, by using inner HTML? You have uh, an alert. Because the uh, because there is uh, an inner H because the is used inner HTML as a sync uh, on a tainted variable, which uh, uh, 
comes from location href and here we see that uh, I don't know if you can see uh, but this is actually I can show you inner HTML of uh, this text this variable is considered as uh, um, tainted but not the other one the one using uh, in fact you can you you see no alert here about the the other one so if this is the basics we can try to go to BBC and see what happens <coughs> okay some you will see some uh, false positive uh, but what's interesting here is that inside the location tab which is uh, where the what is uh, looking for what the applicate what javascript is looking for inside um, oh well before that sorry but i want to show you a, a very simple one this one okay let's take this page and uh, we have no alerts here but we have uh, a location uh, row that says that uh, the JavaScript is looking for ID sequence on uh, the href. So we try to add it and see what happens by adding by reloading the page again. Okay, now we have uh, in first of all an alert, but let's go. Uh, index of ID, the, the, the one before, but then there is a, a, a filtering stuff which uh, looks for uh, not uh, uh, ampersand and hash and then splits uh, the, the equals. After that uh, you can see that from the location href takes a substrings which is actually the ID part regular expression splits the equals and gets AAA sorry AAA which concats concatenates to and then use it as a doc with document write as a sync so in the end we can try to add uh, let's see if I have uh, okay let's uh, just uh, I'll show you just uh, a simple uh, we have to go outside uh, okay since we are inside the script, uh, we have to go outside the script, uh, add a new, close the script here, add a new script, uh, alert, or execute some, uh, oh no, it's okay, and this one, uh, there you go. So, without seeing any JavaScript, actually, we can uh, track down uh, by knowing uh, sources and uh, um, sinks and uh, knowing where to 
tamper data. Also, just to show you This is the code that you should uh, have tracked uh, by hand, okay? <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go to the BBC. There's still some bug. This is the new version, okay? So, ecco. So, we see here that it's looking for zone equals something and uh, look at this I'll show you uh, can you see this is uh, they, they change it a bit we saw we saw it before. This is the filter. Uh, there is an HTTP at the beginning, but the filter is very similar. No, anything plus uh, dot plus anything after the HTTP. So actually anything. So so what's le just let's try to simply add this. Uh, zone http www bbc co uk uh, co uk slash bbc com uh, slash js something like that just to to see what happens Oh yeah, we now have uh, one alert, and uh, we see that it's trying to doc use document write to create a script whose source attribute is directly controlled by the location, by that parameter that we didn't know. So instead of doing this, actually I prepared uh, uh I think I have here this should should do the its work let's see there it is it asks for uh, uh my local host I created a directory uh dub dub bbc co uk will match it the the j the the, the that uh, that regular expression and uh, who's uh, was um, content <coughs> is alert one alert one okay so yeah okay <coughs> and this is uh, actually an example of uh, what can be done uh, Ah, this is uh, also interesting. Der Spiegel. Okay, now here we are s it's saying, uh, yeah, probably a uh, false positive. Okay, now I just, uh, I'll just show that in some place uh, we should uh, have a look at every uh, this is the, the what's looking at uh, the what the application is looking at uh, inside. Now, so we have the referrer, the cookie, 
which is uh, actually disabled as a source. Uh, the name, window name, the sources I showed you before. Elements, what's looking at the elements. So maybe we could try to see if uh, by uh, writing something in, uh, in the input element uh, creates, no, this does nothing, okay. But let's I'll show you after maybe. Uh, by looking at uh, all this stuff, uh, in the end we will see that uh, uh, there are uh, there are particular um patterns and uh, one of that uh, one of those is this after adding that uh, you'll probably i don't know if they changed uh, something Yeah, probably here, yes. This alert uh, is uh, directly connected to the to OAS OAS uh, Belegung uh, whatever it is. Uh, and uh, this way we actually know that uh, is here somewhere here there it is and uh, that we can control it so we do the same as before we add we know that there is uh, uh, quotes there are quotes we add uh, some payload and try to inject javascript there is only one thing not every browser um, behaves uh, the same way with uh, uh, particular characters in particular from the location I mean that if I use uh, Chrome which is here and uh, I try to add I simply add uh, for example uh, uh, quotes uh, to the search, to the search part, the query string, and I ask for, and I ask for location, href, uh, you will see that here quotes are the quote character, but uh, as a result of uh, in the JavaScript part, uh, there is the encoded version of the quotes. So, and the Firefox uh, has, uh, is um, even more restricted. So, because uh, if I can't, uh, if I can uh, remember, uh, for example, the, the, the apostrophe is treated as an apostrophe by Chrome, but by Firefox, probably not. So, how could we? deal with all those uh, all that uh, uh, behaviors I did this the inside the DOM XSS wiki there is a table which says uh, what characters are live are uh, uh, left as they are when they when uh, JavaScript is trying to get uh, some part of the source so for example uh, Explorer 8, uh, if uh, via JavaScript we call document.url in uh, the path info part, so the, the, the path part, not the, the, the host part, uh, 
the exclamation mark is, is left as it is. The dollar sign, ampersand, uh, the apostrophe, uh, and so on. Uh, but uh, then uh, the, in the search part uh, we have also the quotes but uh, more important we have the angular parentheses so we don't need to be sure that javascript uh, uh, decode uh, that value in order to have uh, the special character that let uh, the attacker to inject the payload which will create the real attack no uh, under explorer for example uh, uh, angular parenthesis from the search part after the question mark will be cons will be seen as uh, the character itself uh, so some issue is uh, exploitable is to be considered exploitable uh, under explorer not uh, under firefox because firefox uh, encodes it so unless javascript unescape then is exploitable only in explorer dominator uh, in dominator i created uh, a union of the set so it works uh, most of the time okay but uh, once you once we know that uh, for example uh, we we have an alert box uh, we at least uh, need to go to the, this kind of table and see which one is the browser that allows uh, that particular character without uh, being uh, unescaped. Well, actually, if uh, exploitable on all browsers, it's okay as well. And so on. This is uh, all the table uh, with all the, the list. I didn't do by hand, eh? I, I used the uh, script. Okay. So I think uh, I just finished the This is the we, in the origin it, the, the name was Dominatrix because it's about XSS. Uh, and th that one is uh, that logo is by Gareth Hayes, which is uh, uh, the next uh, speaker that will be in. Uh, is an artist <laughs> as well. So uh, by using Dominator, I found I took the top uh, ten uh, uh, top sorry top hundred uh, hosts uh, uh, in the world which is a, an Alexa uh, parade and uh, I found uh, uh, 56 issues s uh, exploitable issues uh, in uh, 56 uh, hosts so uh, it's uh, it's a very um it is not so much known as issue as an issue uh, don't base it xss because it's difficult to analyze and uh, so i hope that with this tool it will be uh, more considered and uh, it will be easier to to find i found also issues on uh, omnitor which is uh, adobe uh, google uh, advertising uh, system uh, uh, several widgets uh, and buttons like uh, Facebook like, Twitter uh, and other things I can't remember. Uh, working on porting it to 8 actually. Uh, this version is the new version. I hope it will be uh, available uh, in maybe one month maximum. Uh, there is a Google Code project, uh, which is the one for the releases, and there is uh, the Dominator project on uh, GitHub, uh, which is the new version. Uh, you can, uh, if you uh, want to follow it, uh, you can see the differences uh, in the C code uh, and uh, 
try to understand how it works and so on. There is a mailing list which is actually low traffic mailing list in the sense that uh, I, I don't use it very much, but I'll use it for uh, uh, let the people uh, who's interested uh, to, to know news and so on. And uh, if you have any question, uh, I'm here. Thank you.